Hi and welcome to another RetroNAS video. Today we're going to look at the GOG offline backup scripts. These will let you uh, backup and mirror your entire GOG library to your RetroNAS device. Uh, we'll go through what GOG is and how to do that. So before I start the technical how-to of this, um, I just want to talk a bit about GOG and what GOG is. I guess it's a pretty good question because why does RetroNAS bother with uh, GOG games and not other systems like Steam and whatever else? And I, and I guess the reason RetroNAS does is because of a particular feature of GOG, uh, which I'll get to in a sec. Um, before I go on though, um, you know, I, I don't have anything to do with GOG, I'm not sponsored by them, I'm not affiliated by them, anything like that. Uh, I just like their philosophy uh, about how they distribute games and I'll get to that in a sec. Uh, but one of the cool things about GOG, if you head to the GOG website, which I'm here, uh, you can go to the store, uh, you can have a look at what games they've got uh, on offer. Uh, I don't mind doing this, looking from oldest to newest, and you can see there's quite a quite a bit of really old stuff here. We've got some Leisure Suit Larry, some Pirates, uh, the the PC, the DOS version of Metal Gear, um, which in my opinion is nowhere near as cool as the MSX version. It's got a lot of faults, but anyway, it's there, which is interesting. Um, likewise, if you go to what's on sale. Uh, and same sort of thing, head up to the uh, sort and sort by oldest. You can find some uh, pretty cool deals on some weird old games, Toonstruck, uh, which had, uh, what's his face, Christopher Lloyd in it. Uh, it was a weird kind of uh, full motion video slash pixel art slash live action mishmash game. Uh, it was pretty, pretty interesting. You'll see the supported operating systems too. Um, support, you know, some older, I guess modern but older Windows. Uh, Linux supports there, Mac OS supports there too. Um, so what GOG do is they often wrap a lot of these old games up in DOSBox or something like that. So they uh, they work pretty well on new computers. Uh, but what's kind of cool about that is you can often extract the games out uh, and play them on older computers. Uh, and I'll, I'll show you a little bit of information later on on how to get about that. But anyway, this is their, their web storefront. Uh, they have a, a launcher tool. Um, so if I click on my own games here, these are all the games I own, and I can you know click on any of these, uh, install and run them. So in that respect, the same as Epic or Steam or, or anything else that you're probably used to in PC land. Um, but that's not really the bit that I enjoy about the company and how they bundle games. Uh, what I like to do is, if I go to my own library here, and I'll pluck out a random game. I'll have a look at this uh, Blake Stone game here, because I don't mind that game too much. It's a pretty cool old uh, first person shooter that came out about the same time that Doom did, unfortunately. This is based on the, the Wolfenstein engine, so um, it kind of flopped commercially, but it's a good game. Uh, if you uh, run it through the, the um, GOG Galaxy or GOG Galaxy installer you can just one click install and it handles it for you um, however if you go to the actual page what you'll notice is a couple of things number one you can download the game for offline backup now this is the critical part of what GOG is about for me um, and and this is a, a bit of a divisive thing and, and you know I don't want to get too ranty or political about it but GOG 100% of their library are DRM free, so that's digital rights management. They don't have any sort of uh, copy protection or online activation or you need to be online to play or anything like that. If you click on this little uh, download link here, you can grab uh, the actual installer. So that will just grab a compressed uh, .exe file and inside there is the installer that installs the game and run it. In this particular case it installs a pre-bundled version, a DOS box, but you can dive inside that and pull the actual game contents out and you can copy them to a real MS-DOS machine and run them which is pretty cool. Um, they also have manuals and things like that so back in the old days uh, video games did get shipped in a box with a manual which is really cool, don't do that anymore. Um, nowadays you just get an empty box with a, a plastic SD card type cartridge in it or, a, or an optical disc, not much else going on which is kind of sad. Uh, but GOG often scan manuals, you'll often get wallpapers for things, um, you can get soundtracks, they all bundle it in here. Now 
the really cool thing is all of it is DRM free. Um, this one might have yep, different systems as well. So if you're a Linux user like me, I'm in Windows today, but normally I game in Linux. Uh, you can grab the Linux installer, same for Mac. Um, yeah, so these are DRM free. They have no copy protection on them. You can download them, back them up. If GOG, the company, ever goes bust uh, and all their stuff goes offline, anything you've downloaded, you keep and will work. There's no hacking or cracking to try and make these games work. One of the arguments I get against this is that, you know, yeah, you can crack Steam games or yeah, Steam also have DRM free games scattered within their library. That's cool. I also use Steam for uh, certain games. Um, you know, I'm not anti-Steam by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, however, I, I do like GOG's 100% DRM free mindset. Uh, I think that's really great. Um, so if you want to know more about the company in general, uh, what I do recommend is uh, this uh, documentary by Noclip. They're a really excellent um, online YouTube documentary group, make a lot of uh, really great documentaries about all sorts of things, especially video gaming. Uh, this particular documentary is all about GOG, where they came from and what they offer, um, goes through the, the legal and political side, I guess, of how to deal with getting old games and commercializing them and, and selling them, which is, you know, obviously very difficult. There's a lot of uh, lawyers who get in the way of these things. Um, so that's really interesting if you want to uh, dive into that. Uh, the other thing I recommend is this great channel, Phil's Computer Lab. Um, Phil's a fellow Australian. He runs this particular uh, YouTube channel. Uh, and it's just heaps and heaps and heaps of like old, um, you know, computer stuff, uh, putting modern computer stuff into old computer stuff. So, you know, flashcards and things into old PCs, um, using thin clients to play DOS games and Windows 95 games and, you know, whatever else. Really good channel for that kind of stuff. If you head to his channel and you search GOG, you will find an absolute ton of guides on how to get GOG games working on their native platform. So how to pull them out of their DOSBox emulators and things and play them on real DOS, how to tweak them so they look great. Um, there's a lot of guides here. I think this is really worth your time if you are into uh, DOS and early Windows gaming great way to have a look at this stuff and of course uh, via GOG you can buy a lot of these games uh, often they're on sale for a couple of bucks which is pretty cool uh, and again all DRM free so if there was DRM in the original games if there was some sort of copy protection GOG will rip that out make it really easy to play these things um, it, it's not all good some of the games get edited uh, for different reasons whether it's because of lawyers and legal nonsense or whether it's because they need to make it more compatible for a newer system so it becomes a little bit less compatible with an older system so it's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination um, however from a, a DRM perspective uh, that's the bit I really like about it that's that's what really um, excites me so uh, enough of that let's get on with the technical side now of uh, how RetroNAS can download your entire GOG library and keep that around for uh, offline use. Even if GOG go bust and they disappear, you can have your entire library downloaded uh, and backed up uh, for your own personal use uh, of all the games that you have legally purchased through this system. So let's have a look at that. Rightio, so as usual, run my command prompt, sh to my pi. So again, uh, you know, RetroNAS can be installed on anything you want. It can be a Raspberry Pi works, an old VM, uh, an old computer works, a virtual machine works. All these things work. Um, so let's run the installer. All right, uh, head to install things. And from the menu here, scroll down. There's a fair few things getting added these days. But if you go to this GOG repo, GOG repo, um, which is a bit of software. So if you if you read the wiki page that I've got on my GitHub, it tells you about the GOG repo software and who wrote that. So again, I don't write this stuff. RetroNAS is just a collection of other people's stuff that I glue together in an interface. Um, it's all these wonderful people who, uh, who do uh, all this work. They're the ones who should be celebrated. Um, and I'm using this particular GOG repo tool. So let's just install that.
Okay, all installed. Get out of there. Let's browse to our uh, RetroNAS device. Uh, and in here now we get a GOG folder. So there's nothing in there at the moment, it's completely empty. Um, let's see how we can populate that. So back to our terminal, run our RetroNAS again. Head to Run Tools and Scripts and you'll see the GOG downloader. So again, we have to install the tool first over in the install menu. Once it's installed, uh, that's fine. Now we do the actual tool to do the work. So a couple of things you've got to do first. Um, in order for it to know about your account, we're going to have to uh, enter our credentials. Now, this tool never ever stores your username and password. What it's going to do uh, is it's going to initiate a logon securely over HTTPS from your RetroNAS device out to GOG uh, and that will download a cookie. So similar to how when you log into things on the internet uh, and then you go away for a bit and you come back and it remembers who you are and it remembers your credentials and you don't have to re-authenticate. It's going to do that same process uh, but from the command line. So let's go ahead and do that. So put in your username. I'll put in mine, I'll, I'll blank this out, but I'm putting mine in. And likewise, put in your password. Uh, now this won't be echoed to the screen. So it'll attempt to log in to uh, GOG and once it's successful uh, and it's stored your credentials, it'll just say that everything's great. Head back out. Uh, now, number two, we want to uh, change our operating system settings. So you get to choose what you want to download. So Windows only, Mac only, Linux only, or some combination thereof. Uh, I'm, for the purposes of demonstration, going to choose all operating systems here. Although, um, for myself, I like to download all operating systems um, type games anyway. I don't know what I'm going to be playing games on in the future. Um, you know, I've got a lot of different computers floating about and it's kind of fun to fire up old games on different computers. I've got some old Macs, I've got some old PCs. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to grab all of them. Uh, now that I've set my operating system, I'm going to synchronize my games list. Now, uh, my games list, as you saw before, if I open up my uh, GOG Galaxy, uh, is not the biggest thing in the world, but it's still pretty hefty. There's still a lot of games here um, and it's going to have to go and grab XML information from all of these. Um, now, not to not sort of choke, it rate limits itself a little bit. So what you'll find is that running this takes a little bit of time. So um, if you're in a rush, don't do this. Uh, I'm going to run this and I might sort of quick cut through it, I think, just to save a bit of time so you don't have to sit there watching things scroll past. So it'll go in alphabetical order. You can see I've got 83 games in my collection. And it's going to run through and grab the information for each one. How fast this goes really does depend on a lot of things. Um, I found some days it can be pretty quick and I found some days it can be really slow. Um, so today feels like a bit of a slow day, um, but still, yeah, you're looking at like, what am I doing here? 30 odd seconds uh, per title. So not the fastest thing in the world. Um, however, once it's grabbed all that information, we can do some interesting things with it. So I'm gonna let that run uh, and I'll cut to the end so that we can see what happens then. Okay, so that's all done. Uh, you can see down the bottom, it took 29 minutes to synchronize the just the metadata for the 83 games I've got. Uh, now this varies wildly. I do think it's on the, I don't think it's the tool, I think it's on the GOG side. I think they rate limit. Um, however, that's okay, I guess. Uh, you only have to do this once to grab all the games in your list if you buy new games and rerun this tool it'll skip the ones it knows about and it'll just grab the new game so you won't have to do this every time only on the first run 
uh, subsequent runs will be a lot faster, obviously, because it's just the games that you've purchased between now and then, which is pretty cool. So once you're done there, uh, head back to the menu. So we have done the uh, credentials, we've done the operating system choice, we've synchronized the games list. Uh, now you can uh, download and update all games. So this will, if you run this, it'll just go and fetch every single game in your games list. Uh, that's cool. Uh, however, mine are pretty huge. I've got games like uh, Witcher 3 in there and a few others which are massive. So I'm not going to do that. What I'll do is I'll grab a single game just to demonstrate how that works. So this list here is built uh, on what the GOG repo tool names games. So you can see it, it uh, gives each game a unique identity. Uh, doesn't put any um, special characters or anything in there. Uh, just puts this sort of uh, lowercase underscore type method. So uh, this is what the tool names it. I don't name these things. I just try and pluck it out of the XML file that it creates. Uh, you can see all my games there. So I'm going to go and grab uh, Blake Stone, Aliens of Gold, and I'm going to use that as a demo because that's fairly small, I think. Uh, so yeah, just choose that game, hit enter. Now it will uh, refetch the manifest. So what this will do is if the game has up Updated, uh, out on GOG, so say they've pushed an update or something like that, uh, this will re refresh the new data. Uh, and what's cool about that is that um, if a new version comes out, so you see here for example right like there's uh, 2.002, 2.006, so if you've got an existing version, say you had 2.000 and this updated, they put a patch out or something like that, it will download the the new version and put it side by side with the old version. So if you care about having all the releases of a game, uh, and this is something that probably uh, preservationist types care about, like it's, it's some people just want the latest version, don't care. Some people want to be able to pick and choose which version of a game they play. Um, and that can be really important to people if changes come along to the game that they don't like in, in future versions of the game. And again, this is why I'm, I'm pretty pro uh, GOG and pro um, DRM free digital gaming. Uh, because you can do that. You can go back and play old versions or new versions, unpatched versions, whatever you like. So you can see here it's gone and it's grabbed the uh, .exe. So that's the Windows version there. It's grabbed a .dmg file, which is the Mac version. It's grabbed the .sh, which is the Linux version. And it's grabbed the manuals. Um, so what we can do from here uh, is check that on, on disk. Let's have a look. So here's my uh, RetroNAS share again. Uh, the GOG folder, you can see that this Blake Stone Aliens of Gold has been created. So that's the, the uh, GOG repo tool that goes and does that. And if I go in there, uh, you can see what's going on. A little info.txt here just tells me, uh, uh, here we go, some changelog information, which is pretty cool. Uh, even the user rating, a link to the game. So you can see all this kind of stuff. Um, if that interests you, a bit of metadata there, the original release, 1991. Uh, actually, I don't know. Yeah, that would be the original game release, not the uh, GOG release. Uh, and again, we've got these um, different files inside the user manual here. Uh, you can see the uh, PDF version of the user manual. So that's pretty cool. It's nice that uh, they include that kind of stuff. This had a whole comic book in it, which is really cool as the user manual, so you get that for free. Um, but anyway, that's that's GOG specific stuff. So uh, that's the tool in a nutshell. Uh, what I hope to have in the future, so right now you can download a single game or you can download all games. Uh, I will try at some point and put, a, oh, this final one here, full synchronize. So that um, does essentially this synchronize your games list and uh, download update all games in the games list. It does those two things in one uh, massive task. If you just want to do a massive backup, that's the button to push. Um, however, if you just want to grab a single game, do that. I will try and add a feature in the future where you can uh, checkbox it. You can pick three or four games and download them instead of having to manually download one games one at a time. Um, that might be a, uh, a little bit more useful. Um, but in the meantime, this is here, lets you download things, back things up. So again, check out the uh, video channels that I linked to, um, the, the Noclip documentary on GOG if you want to know more about who GOG are. Check out 
uh, Phil's computer lab for a great channel full of guides on how to use GOG games, not only in modern operating systems, like you can run these things in Windows 10, Windows 11, but also if you want to go back and play with them on old operating systems, maybe the OS that the game originally came out for, um, see if you can get it working on an old DOS machine or something like that. Um, or just use it as a, uh, a backup system for the games that you have legally purchased uh, as an offline copy. Again, remember that uh, you know it's not digital versus physical. Uh, that's the argument. I think the argument should be about whether or not uh, things have DRM and whether or not you own and control what you've purchased. And I think this is a pretty good way to make sure that you indeed do uh, own and control the things that you've purchased. All right, thanks. Happy gaming.